Hello again, so today we have the Apple Macintosh Classic 2. I purchased this recently on eBay for £40. That may sound cheap, that's because I purchased it as a faulty item. I'll get back to that subject later on. So the Apple Mac Classic 2 replaced the Macintosh SE30 in 1991. Like the SE30, the Classic 2 was powered by a 16MHz Motorola CPU and had either a 40 or 80 megabit hard drive. This model, as of yet, I'm unsure which size the hard disk is. As I said, I didn't know either. The Classic 2 shares a case with the earlier Classic. It is also quite similar to the Macintosh LC. There were two Classic 2 cases. Later models came with a speaker grill on the left side for enhanced sound, as you can see here. The Classic 2 was the last black and white compact Macintosh and it was finally discontinued in October 1993 and replaced by the Colour Classic. It was also the last desktop Macintosh to include an external floppy drive port. Apple discontinued support for the Classic 2 on January 2001. On the rear panel here you can see the ports from left to right, the microphone, the ADB which is Apple Desktop Bus, external floppy disk drive, the SCSI printer, the modem port and headphones. There are two Torx case screws that are visible both on the bottom left and right. So I mentioned earlier that I bought this as a faulty item. The problem with this one is when you power it on the uh, screen will only display vertical bars as you can see here. This seems to be a common problem with the old Macs. I bought this after seeing a video by a YouTuber named Techmoan. He found via various online sources that by removing the motherboard and soaking it in water will resolve the problem. Sounds like utter nonsense, doesn't it? However, from his video, it appeared to have done the trick. So for some odd reason, this intrigued me. Having never really seen a Macintosh up close and uh, never ever used one either, I decided I would try it out for myself. So here we are. So let's get down to it. Let's strip this baby down. As you can probably tell, although it is in reasonable shape, this Mac is pretty dirty and on the front it has been security marked. This once belonged to Birmingham University in England. It's not stolen, I can assure you. I have the eBay receipt to prove it. Now first of all, I need to remove the back cover. This is held in place to the front frame and the chassis via four Torx screws. I'll unscrew them now. The screw holes to get to them are quite narrow so I need a slim sized Torx screwdriver. I also really needed a Torx screwdriver that is magnetised at the tip as even though the screws are undone they're still fiddly to get out so I need to tip the unit in order for them to drop out. Now that the screws are off I can now remove the back cover. It should just slide off but I need to reposition the Mac to get it off properly. And there you go. Now we can see inside the machine it uses a CRT monitor just like the old style TVs. Now for a safety alert. If you're going to mess around with machines like this or mess around with old TVs, do not touch the CRT monitor unless you have properly discharged it. Even though it is not connected to the power supply, it can still hold current for weeks, months, even years. Don't be a knob, think. Carrying on, I need to unplug a couple of cables from the motherboard and then it's just the simple case of sliding it out. Unlike conventional PCs and laptops, the motherboard is not screwed to the frame. Nice and easy. Here's a close up of the hard drive. I still can't see what the memory capacity is. It may say on the other side if I take that out, but I don't need to do that for this task, so I won't. Below the hard drive is the 1.4 megabytes floppy disk drive. I do miss the floppy disks. Sure, they don't hold much data, but I miss the sound of the drive as it's reading and writing to disk. Let's have a quick look inside of the back cover. It's quite dirty and dusty. Some of the vent holes are clogged up with dust. I might give them a clean later. The bottom vent is for the main fan, so you can understand why over the course of the years of it being used, it will gather crud and grime. Stamped on the back is the date which I can assume was the date when it was manufactured. This reads, It was manufactured in Ireland as the details on the back of the cover tell me so. 
Now that the motherboard is out, what I need to do now is remove the battery, the two RAM cards and the four ROM chips. It was also suggested by Techmoan via an online forum that the ROM chips need to be reseated, rather going to the foot extreme of soaking the motherboard in water. I did do this, but it didn't work. I've not included that footage in the video as it would have been rather dull. Now those components are out, I'm going to soak the motherboard in soapy water for two to three hours. Three days later. It's been three days, I've let the motherboard dry fully by putting it next to a radiator and I'm confident that it is dry and hopefully it won't go bang when I start it up. The motherboard is now back in the Mac and hooked up, so let's start this up and see what happens. And there we go, no more vertical lines. So soaking the motherboard in water does actually work. This method I've demonstrated here is by no means a permanent fix, but I wonder how long the Mac will continue to work before getting those vertical lines again. The cause of the vertical lines is due to leaking capacitors on the motherboard, causing a short circuit. The correct way to fix it would be to replace those capacitors, but that is far beyond my capabilities. So that's it for part one. For part two, I'll be cleaning up the cover to make it look more presentable. And also I'll need to acquire a Apple keyboard and a mouse so that I can actually have a play around with my new toy. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.